Welcome kids to our session in English 7, Module 6, Day 1. Join me to uncover classes in the selection as Shawl for Anita. It's a short story by Lolita Andrada. And for our lesson objectives, at the end of the lesson, we'll be able to activate prior knowledge and experiences in understanding a text, express desirable values gleaned from the text, and identify classes as independent and dependent. A picture of a thousand words. Look closely at the picture and share your thoughts about it. The picture is a shawl. And when we talk about a shawl, Usually, it's a fabric garment used as a covering for the head or shoulders. And what do you think is the relevance of a shawl to the selection? A shawl for Anita. Mm -hmm. As we continue, we'll find it out. Now let's have this one. What's the word? Before we'll read a selection, let's have this difficult words to uncover. So I want you to use the sentence as your hints to find the correct meaning of words. Don't be so callous that you haven't noticed what is happening around you these days. The word callous defines as not feeling or showing any concern about the problems of others. Brilliant. Life was hard then, but mother eat out a living to provide us with our needs. The word it defines as to get through with great difficulty. I'm done with my chores so I can now indulge myself to a movie marathon. The word indulge defines as to do something as a special pressure. Can you stop following me? You truly hurt me. The word hurt defines as to bother or annoy. Her knuckles look swollen after a whole day of writing. The word knuckles defines as any one of the thick bony parts of the fingers. Rama's body has already become frail, so she showed up working in the house. The word frail defines as having less than normal amount of strength. She was knitting a shawl from her mother. The word knitting defines as to make a piece of clothing from yarn or trim. Observe how her deaf hands can knit his head in just one hour. The word deaf defines as skillful and clever. I envy her for getting easily what she wants. The word envy defines as Feeling of wanting to have what someone else has. I need to go out to the garden for I'm cooked up here inside the house. The word cook defines as to confine in restricted area. A show for Anita. It's a short story by Lolita and Rana. Let me read to you the story. Okay, don't forget to note some details of it. And of course, don't forget about those words, the definition, and how it is being used in the sentence. My mother brought us up single-handedly. It was a Herculean task for a woman so frail, dealing with the three adults and children. But she managed. She never finished high school, but her deaf hands had skillfully egged up a living for the four of us. She was good at kneading. The tide was over until the eldest got a diploma of teaching. Then she put up a sorry store to send the other children to college. Mother wanted us all to start a college degree, and she had sacrificed much to see us through. Mother had a soft heart, especially for Anita. Anita was the youngest, and I, being the middle child, had always been with her. She was sickly, and mother willingly indulged her. My sister's whimpers never irked her. She was ever so gentle with her when I, impatient and jealous, I never understood my mother. 
My mother, who had always been so <clears throat> a frail woman, was much thinner now. Anita, who was married by now, had never stopped being pampered. Her lack of concern for her mother's failing health was getting on my nerves. I felt like shouting at her, calling her names, and I heard her ask mother to need a shawl for her. Mother could hardly refuse, but I knew that the task was just too much for her. Her fingers had lost their flexibility. Rheumatic pain told in her knuckles that felt a million pins pricking. My heart went out to her every time I saw her painfully knitting needles into the yarn. The rest of us did not want to see mother lift a finger. She was too old to work and, she, and we wanted to save her the burden of doing even the lightest household chores. Mother said she felt useless being cooped up in the house all day, doing nothing. It was before Anita sweet talked her into knitting her shawl. I was beginning to hate Anita for being so callous. Knitting the shawl might have been an agony for mother. She never showed any pain. At the end of the day, she would look at her handiwork. A smile on her lips, she held it against her. Knitting proved to be a slow process, but mother didn't mind. I did, and when Anita showed up one day to visit mother, I scolded her for being so thoughtless. Anita touched my arm and in a gentle voice said, I did it for mother. That shawl is giving her reason to live. She was wasting away. Didn't you notice? She felt so useless because she had nothing to do. No matter how small, mother is the one person who prefers to live her life working. If she stops working, she will stop living. I nodded my head. Perhaps Anita was right. I was beginning to understand my mother. What valuable insights did you gain from the story? This election reflected worthwhile Filipino values such as hard work, sacrifice, perseverance, and love of family. The selection provides young learners the importance of living out these values, especially when you relate it to other people. Next thing, let's have this yes or no. Given with the following sets of words, Taken from the story, decide yes if it's complete idea, while no if it's incomplete idea. Until the eldest got the diploma in teaching, complete or incomplete? Yes, no. Congratulations. I nodded my head. Complete, not complete. who had always been a frail woman. When I heard her ask mother to knee, Okay, as you continue to improve your skills in reading and writing, you will need to refresh your knowledge about classes. Classes is a group of words with at least a subject and a verb. It is a sentence in its simplest form, the subject of a clause can be mentioned or hidden, but the verb must be apparent or distinguishable. Clauses can be independent or dependent. An independent or main clause can stand by itself. Anita was the youngest. I nodded my head. I was beginning to understand my mother. That's the example. A dependent or subordinate clause also has a subject and a verb, but it cannot stand by itself because it starts with a subordinate word. Until the eldest got a diploma in teaching, the subordinate word is until. As he held it against her, the subordinate is us, because she had nothing to do, because it's a subordinate word. To complete the idea of a dependent clause, a main clause must be added. Her job died it as over until the others got a diploma in teaching. Her job died it as over, that's the main clause, while dependent clause 
until the eldest got a diploma in teaching because of the presence of subordinate word until. She felt so useless that the maid class because she had nothing to do. Because she had nothing to do, that's dependent clause, which started with the word because, then that's a subordinate word. When we talk about subordinators, or like the subordinating conjunctions, after, although, as, if, because, before, provided that, since, unless, until, then, as long as, as soon as, once, by the time, however, and many more examples. We can also use coordinating conjunctions to add to our dependent clause, such as for, and, nor, but, or, yet, and so, are used to introduce an independent clause. And we can also use relative pronouns and compound relative pronouns used to introduce a dependent clause. These are who, whom, whose, which, and that. And compound relative pronouns are however, whomever, whichever, whatever, whatever, and the like. Relative adverbs such as when, where, and how are also used to introduce independent clauses. Let's try. Don't forget to answer in all capital letters. Identify the independent clause. While you were sleeping, your mother stayed away. Dependent clause. I am sleeping. Congratulations. Identify the independent clause. Wow. Brilliant. Identify the dependent. Congratulations. Identify the independent. She kept on working for her children. Congratulations. Now to sum it to sum it up, reading selection reflected again, worthwhile Filipino values, hard work, sacrifice, perseverance, love of family, providing young learners the importance of living up these values in relating with others. And of course, the other one classes can be independent or dependent. Thank you for listening. Hope that you've learned something today. And I'll see you in our next virtual class. Bye!